Hi everybody, this is Susan from Susan Monroe Art, and today I wanted to do a video about watercolor sketching and how sketching can improve your watercolor work. It's something I'm really interested in right now. Um, there's an urban sketching movement. If you go on Instagram and hashtag urban sketching, um, it's people using sketchbooks to improve their drawing ability. Um, then they use watercolors to color them in and also it just makes a really cool record of your life and things that interest you. Um, and I'm finding that it's really improving my, my drawing ability and if your drawing ability improves and your watercolor skill improves as well. So I wanted to share that with you. We'll take a look at some of my sketchbooks. We'll take a look at the tools that I'm using. And as I said, I'm sort of new to this too, so I'm going to be sharing my learning experience as I learn with you a little bit. And I'm thinking about doing a series on this, so if that interests you, just make a comment down uh, below, or just a series on uh, drawing for watercolor, sketching for watercolor, because watercolor is one thing, but to have a good watercolor, a lot of the time you have to know how to draw what you're gonna paint. So um, I think that's an important part of watercolor that people forget. So if you're interested in that, let me know by putting a comment below. You can also subscribe to my channel by clicking on the button that's in one of these corners. I don't remember which one. And um, I'd love it also if you follow me on Instagram. Um, my handle is Susan Monroe Art. And uh, yeah, I hope you'll like this video. Click the thumbs up and let me know. Thanks a lot. Let's get going. So here are some of my sketchbooks. As I said, I don't have a ton of sketchbooks. I'm still a little new to this whole sketching um, movement, particularly the urban sketchers movement. And I wanted to tell you a little bit of what I've learned about that as we look at my sketchbooks. Urban sketching is a movement that was started by Gabriel Campanario up in uh, Washington State. And through that movement, artists record their daily lives, they record their travels, they record um, just things that make up their world as a record of their lives, as a record of the world that they live in, as a way to speak about what is happening in their worlds. Uh, and of course they are doing it through art and through sketchbooks. The idea of urban sketching is that you'll be sketching on location, uh, sketching from life. You portray scenes realistically. You also um, support other urban sketchers. There's no criticism. There is no set group of tools that you have to use. I mentioned using watercolor, um, but if you don't want to use water, watercolor, you want to use gouache or pen and ink. That's all acceptable as well. The sketchbook I'm showing you right now is one that I worked on when I was at the beach recently. I had not heard of urban sketching at that time, but I was doing it without realizing it. And these are just some of the sketches I made of things that I saw and things that I did while I was at the beach. This is a tiny sketchbook. Um, it is a Paul Rubens sketchbook. I really like it. It's got very nice paper. I like the size. I haven't filled it yet, but that's an example of one of my sketchbooks. Another way that I've kept a sketchbook is I set a goal for myself, sketch something once a week. Sketching just improves your drawing skills. It builds your confidence. It's so good for you in so many ways, but it was really hard for me to commit to doing it, mostly because I didn't like my sketches. I decided to start making a journal. It's a calendar. One side of each page would be my, my calendar, which I drew out by hand. And then on the other side would be the sketch I did for that week. This is a, clearly mine from 2020. I think you saw that at the beginning. I have one for 2019 and one for 2018. Uh, in those, I've given myself permission to draw whatever I wanted, and pretty much I was just drawing things that I saw every day. So you can see, you, you can be very free to draw what you want. If that means drawing your lunch, draw your lunch. Use the tools that you have available, use what you feel comfortable with, and just continue to draw and use it as a way to express yourself. 
Now, urban sketching, as I mentioned, is that uh, you should be sketching from life. I don't always do that. Um, I sometimes sketch from photos for a number of reasons. True urban sketching would be sitting in front of the actual ob object and rendering it from life. Um, but there are reasons sometimes not to do that. Um, for me in particular, I live in a big city. A lot of the things I want to sketch are down toward downtown. I don't feel particularly safe as a woman down there by myself sketching alone. So I will go down there and take the photos, observe the location, get the feel of it, come back and sketch from my iPad. Something that I'm particularly liking about urban sketching is the idea that there aren't so many rules you have to follow. Do what works for you, do what makes you feel good and feel like you're improving as an artist. For example, I always thought that if you were sketching, you needed to be sketching um, like with the pen directly to the paper, no pre-drawings or anything. I don't know why I thought that, but uh, I did. And um, I gave myself permission to sketch with pencil first, then overlay it with my, my marker or my pen and ink. And gosh, that's improved my confidence. I think it's improved my drawing as well. So I did that on this sketch. And I can see an improvement in my sketching as I've been working on this. And a fairly quick improvement, I have to say. I don't know if it's just that I'm more confident or that I'm actually getting better. Uh, but either way, it's it's working and I'm enjoying it. I'm not feeling so intimidated by the idea of keeping a sketchbook anymore. This is someplace I really wanted to draw in person. I didn't feel safe. Uh, it's, it's down toward Midtown, downtown Atlanta. It's a cool, cool sign. So I did it from the Google Earth, draw, Google Earth photo. But I also did go down and take my own photos of the location as well. But, um, you know, I, I think that you should be free to do what works for you. National Donut Day, my little spread here. I loved this. This is a magnolia from my backyard. And this is actually the finished drawing of the one I'll be doing for our tutorial today on YouTube. It's the Fox Theater here in Atlanta, a side door. I went down there and took photos. I sketched it from my iPad, so I guess this doesn't really count as urban sketching particularly, but um, for me, it'll have to do because I just didn't feel safe staying down there sketching on the sidewalk alone. Um, and, and I love how it turned out. and. Um, I'm loving how much I'm learning, how much I'm enjoying this, and I think you could do it too. So let's get to work. Let's, um, I'll show you my, my, I'll show you my tools. Um, I'll show you my watercolor palettes I'm using and we'll get going. So these are some of the tools I've been using for my sketching. I like um, doing colorful sketches I've discovered. And I'm particularly liking these um, this little Papermate Inkjoy gel pens. They're not terribly expensive. They come in a big pack. I really like how they draw. I like how colorful they are. And I've been having a lot of fun with, with these. I used these a whole lot when I was, when I was keeping my um, calendar sketchbook. Yeah. A lot of this was done with these Inkjoy gel pens. Okay. These are Posca markers. It's a type of um, paint. It's type. Of, it's a type of paint pen. Um, let's see what they are. They come in different widths and thicknesses. This is the size I've been using, and I just ordered them off of Amazon. And these are the pens that I use to do um, this type of drawing. This type of drawing with uh, the colorful outlines um, like in the style of Lyndon Hayes. So um, 
those are those. So when it comes to pencils, sometimes I use a nice artist pencil, like a Faber-Castell. Uh, make sure you have a sharpener with you if you're gonna use that. These will draw generally a darker line depending on what strength you get. This is a 4B, which can get pretty dark. For light drawing, I just like a um, mechanical pencil like this, super easy. You can get them at the supermarket. And I like it because they always stay sharp. Then for my inking, when I'm drawing back over my, my um, pencil marks, I like these Micron pens. They come in different widths as well. Uh, 20503. From fairly thick to fairly thin, there's always also a brush pen that you can get that I've really enjoyed using with these as well. These are the two palettes I like to take with me when I go out and sketch someplace on the beach, for example. This is a little Winsor & Newton palette. It's got half pans. It came with them already filled with cotton and paints, but you could buy half pans of any type of paint you like or get empty half pans and fill them with your own tube watercolors. I feel there's sand in the paint. Um, but I've really enjoyed doing that. This is supposed to be something to hold your water in. It's not very sturdy, but that's the idea. You have a palette up here, and you can also pull out this area to have another palette uh, to mix your paints. And then we have this one, which I really enjoy. And you can just open it up, and they're all different colors of paint in here. It can be a little fiddly sometimes to get to these paints on the inside. Um, but I've had fun with this, and I think the colors are really bright and enjoyable. This is it says Medine, Meden, M-E-E-D-E-N, watercolors. I also have some of these water brushes. You can see the reservoir here keeps water in it. You can simply give it a little squeeze and the water comes out and then you can get the paint, paint with it, wipe it off on a paper towel when you're done. Um, these have been so fun to use and I've really enjoyed them. You can take just a little extra bottle of water with you to refill the reservoir when you're done or they come in packs of three a lot of the time. I might take all three with the reservoir filled and just switch out the reservoirs as I uh, decide which pen to use. So that's great. All right, now on to the sketching. Okay, so um, here's gonna be my working setup here at my desk. I'm decided to use this little palette and here's the photo I'm gonna be working from. I went down to the Fox Theater, as I said, here in Atlanta and took these photos and um, just sort of walked around and photographed all different parts of the theater. It's really fun. It's really a beautiful theater. Whoops, that's across the street. Here's the fox. And what I want to draw is this door right here. I'm going to keep that drawing on my left keep my paper on my right. I'm not going to use my watercolors quite yet, so let me put them out of the way. I'm going to instead start with my pencil. I'm going to start drawing, and I need to really observe my photo. Uh, first thing I notice, of course, is how symmetrical it is. And whenever I draw anything that's symmetrical, the first thing I do is draw a line right down the middle of my paper. You can use a ruler if you want to do that with a ruler. So when I draw something on one side of the line, I can make it match on the other side of the line. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to draw, I always start on the left-hand side. I'm going to start drawing the left-hand side of the door. And I want you to remember, if my, uh, if yours or my door doesn't come out perfectly the same shape or a little different, it doesn't really matter. I mean, because you're doing this to learn. Don't make your sketchbook your precious. Don't be Gollum with your sketchbook. All right, so there's this half. All right, I'm gonna just continue. I'm gonna go from here. I can either go up or I can go down. I think, actually I think I'm gonna go up and then draw this next out a line right here, that there's the brick. Thank you. 
This part is not the same as that. I think that this lintel is too wide was part of that problem. But you know, all in all, I'm, I'm pleased with it. You can tell what it's supposed to be. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to ink it. So looking at my pens, I wanna use a thinner nib for things that are in the back. Now I'll use a little bit thicker nib for what's up here. So I'll start out with the, let's see what a three looks like. I'll do a three for the back and a five for the front. Notice I'm trying to really make my pen lines one long line. No sketchy broken lines for the pen layer. <laughs> overwhelmed by lines and I sort of lose my place in the lines and I think I've done that here because I've realized I've really done some strange things with this door that aren't correct so I'm gonna try and fix them <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I think I'm ready to erase my pencil lines and do the watercolor. I'm using a kneaded eraser because it doesn't leave those little eraser bits, eraser rot, eraser gradu all over your paper. There. I think watercolors look best when they have a sharp defined edge. So I'm gonna put a little bit of painter's tape around the edge and I'm going to let the drawing, the black and white drawing, go a little beyond that edge. I think it'll make it look sort of cool. We'll see. Okay, and now I'm ready to paint. I think I'm at my desk. I'm going to go ahead and use one of my favorite brushes, this little Dame Denayo. It's this little squirrel hair brush that comes from a really nice fine point. I have a whole set of them and I really love them. So that's what I'm going to use. Oh, I realized I forgot to put some little brick notations on the wall. So I am going to do that.
Pretty pleased with it. I do want to put some more of the shadow in here though. you've enjoyed our little adventure in urban sketching I said urban sketching is great to do actually on location um, but I just want to show that you don't have to be able to go to the location to do it feel free make it your own if you are housebound if you um, don't have the luxury of, of going somewhere uh, fascinating to paint gosh go just find yourself a picture and paint it um, you'll learn a lot. I think you'll enjoy it a lot. And, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've liked this. Please subscribe if you liked it. And follow me on Instagram at Susan Monroe Art. And give me a thumbs up. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.